It is the Savage Nation. It truly is a Blue Monday for America. No doubt you've been talking about this all weekend. We all have been thinking about this lunatic, pothead, moron, left-wing fanatic who loved uh, all of the left-wing literature that you're not reading about. He also liked Hitler's Mein Kampf. That is true. But the man was an occultist. Of course, that didn't make it to your local paper. You're going to start talking about banning handguns. Why not just ban the occult in America? Why don't we hear congressmen talking about banning Wicca in the Army, banning the occult in America? I mean, did you see what came out today about the shooter? I'm sure you haven't, because your friends at CNN, NBC, and Fox News haven't shown it to you. The man was a stone-hearted devil worshiper. Take a look at the thing that we just got that posted up on michaelsavage.com. Look at the altar in the shooter's backyard. No one is saying that this is a good thing. It's a horrible thing. But right away, the left-wing press went crazy. Attack puts focus on poison politics. Poison politics indeed. The day Obama took power, poison politics took power in America. Obama has poisoned the body politic with his Marxist Leninism. That's the poison politics. So we as Americans have a right to speak out against an oppressive government. It doesn't mean that you have to blame us for a lunatic who's a devil worshiper and a pot smoker, by the way. Why don't you talk about his pot smoking? For years I've been warning you about marijuana. Many of you don't even know that the word hashish, hashish, is derived from the Arabic. It means assassin. Did you know that assassin is derived from hashish? Or shall I say hashish is a derivative of assassin? Because for centuries, assassins in the Middle East smoked hashish before they went on a cutting or shooting spree. That's something you wouldn't expect from the New York Times, obviously. Now they're covering the story in another way. Something in him snapped. What do you want me to do? Pay for his therapy? Listen to this story now, Fox News. Something in him snapped. You hear this? Acquaintances describe Arizona gunman as a troubled young man. He's not a troubled young man. He was a devil-worshipping left-wing pothead. The man should have been jailed years ago. Disturbing behavior started to flare up in the last few years. They mean in, in the last few years, not last. I guess there's too much China trade. With campus police run-ins, a college suspension, and a rejection from the Army for drug use. Well, you see, blame it on the Army. Had the Army only been more inclusive, had the Army only been willing to take in potheads or devil worshippers and given him rehab in the Army, maybe this tragedy wouldn't have happened. Now, here's another aspect of this story that's troubling, that I have not yet heard anywhere, because frankly, I turned the news off after it happened. I couldn't stand watching it anymore. I could not take the left-wing slant, seize the guns, kill talk radio. Do you know that this morning my producer had calls from BBC Radio 5 and ITV Television asking Michael Savage to come on the air and talk about the shooting today. I should become the poster boy for this maniac? No, my friends, I didn't go on the air with BBC Radio 5 uh, and uh, the, the ITV Television. I'm banned from England. So they love to say, look at what you've done. Look at what you've done by standing up to Marxist-Leninism. No, I'm not going to be a, to a poster boy for that. But here's a disturbing element of this story that you have not yet heard. All of last week, I reported on the obvious murder of an American hero whose name you don't even know. His name was Wheeler. He was the chief of cybersecurity for the U.S. Air Force. He developed cybersecurity for a very uh, many government departments. He was found dead in a trash bin in a dumpster in Washington, D.C. about 10 days ago. All week long, I tried to point out the the imperative that the FBI and Homeland Security get involved with that case. There was not one word from the FBI, not one word from Homeland Security about the murder of a top cybersecurity governmental official. But the minute this devil-worshipping pothead went crazy and killed these people and wounded the others, right away we hear the FBI will put its full investigative qualities into this case. And here comes Big Sis. She's also going to investigate. Everyone knows who did it. Everyone saw what they're trying to do is broaden the murder to try to prove that there was a militia involved when obviously he was a lone maniac. While in the other case of the dead cybersecurity expert, there was obviously a conspiracy involving many people, and yet there's no FBI nor Homeland Security investigation. Did you know what happened today? I don't want to take you off track, but I'll tell it to you anyway. This came out just minutes ago. Remember I told you Wheeler was found in a, in a trash bin 10 days ago? 
Now listen to this one. Just hours ago, minutes ago, charred remains of ex-DC aide found. Ashley Turton, a Washington lobbyist who was a former chief of staff to Rep. Rosa DeLauro D. Connecticut, and the wife of White House congressional liaison Dan Turton, found dead inside burning car not far from the White House. That's two top governmental officials, two, within a 15-day period, no FBI, no Homeland Security, but we're hearing about the lone, devil-worshipping, pot-smoking, left-wing maniac. There's going to be a full governmental investigation. My friends, we're in deep trouble. Of course, there is a focus on poison politics in America. As I said to you, poison politics didn't begin with conservative radio. Conservative radio was a reaction to the poison politics of the left wing in this country. The virtual monopoly of poison politics of ABC, CBS, you name it, and NBC. And the minute there's a maniac, pot-smoking left-winger who goes on a rampage, they try to blame it on us. You want to talk about poison politics? Then why don't you start with the church that Obama went to and the poison politics of Reverend Wright? Why don't you start with the poison rhetoric of Obama's personal friends, which we tried to warn you about? Why don't we talk about the poisonous words that have come out of the president's mouth ever since he seized power? If you go to a knife fight, bring a gun. Did you hear any of those? How about those poisonous words of the president? You want to look at the track record? Yeah, there's a lot of poison in politics right now. But don't blame politics for what this lunatic did. Please leave politics out of it. The man is insane. You may as well just ban devil worship, and you may as well ban marijuana as banning talk radio. Also on the Savage Nation tonight, in about 20 minutes... We have a big guest, a very big guest, named Donald Trump. And let me tell you why I invited Donald Trump on the show. I'm not a big guest-driven show, okay? Let's clear the air. But I met Donald Trump, and I talked with him, and he said to me, Michael, I love your book, Trickle Up Poverty. You, you got it exactly right when you call for tariffs on China. They're going to kill us unless we put tariffs and tax their profits. And I said, you know, Mr. Trump... I concluded Trickle Up Poverty with a statement that said, run America like a business, not an empire. We need a tough-minded businessman like you to save this country. We don't need another double-talking politician. Will you come on the Savage Nation? Yes, I will. Yes, he'll be here. Right here. 20 minutes. Savage Nation. I'll be back. Savage. We're talking about the uh, tragedy of the shooting, and we're talking about the tragedy of the loss of a fair-minded media in America. Here, ABC interviews a friend of the shooter and ignores her claim he's a liberal. A friend of the gunman accused of Saturday's tragic shooting spree involving Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords was interviewed on Sundays this week, and for some reason her claims posted on Twitter Saturday that Jared Lee Loftner was a liberal when completely ignored. Here's another story in the Savage Nation. Jane Fonda, remember her? Jane Fonda blames Giffords shooting on Sarah Palin and the Tea Party. You know, well, I'll let that one go. Jane Fonda, as far as I'm concerned, is a traitor who should have been tried for treason. Former U.S. Rep. Steve Kagan says Arizona shootings will change the government. Shall we go down the list? Here's another story that just came out that you're not going to believe it's going to take me a lot of time to develop. I can't do it now, but I'm going to hint that. It came out of World Net Daily minutes ago from Aaron Klein. You ready to hear about what school the shooter went to? Do you know anything about that? The high school that this pothead devil worshiper murderer went to was part of a learning community funded jointly by Obama and the domestic terrorist Bill Ayers. Jared Lee Loftner, the suspected gunman in Saturday's Arizona shooting, attended a high school that is part of a network in which teachers are trained and provided resources by a liberal group founded by weatherman terrorist Bill Ayers and funded by President Obama, World Net Daily has learned. The group is called Small Schools Workshop. It has been led by a former top communist activist who was an associate of Ayers. Obama provided the group with funds in the 1990s when he worked at an education reform group alongside Ayers. Shall I read on? I will read on. Later on, I will read on. 
So there we see the connection of the politics of hate. The small schools workshop. Okay? It's a communist front group. That's the kind of high school the lunatic went to. And this kind of school says that they want to provide support for teachers who want to create smaller learning environments. Bill A. has reportedly recruited a radical activist, Mike Klonsky, to head the workshop. Klonsky still serves as director. We'll tell you much more about the Bill Ayers Obama school connection to the shooter, something you won't uh, be reading tomorrow in your local newspaper. And if you're going to start pointing the finger, just remember the other side has a finger to point as well. And when you start talking about the politics of hate, be very careful because you were here first. You had the politics of hate disseminating in this country going back at least to Walter Cronkite. So don't say that the right-wing conservative radio, blogs, and the Internet are responsible for this lunatic. Also, I want to ask you this question. As you well know, I think this country will die unless we get a leader. As you well know, I do not see one politician who can save this country. I have said over and over again, if the Republicans run Sarah Palin, you may as well kiss the Republican Party in America goodbye because Obama will be a second-term president. She cannot win. She may be a fine woman, good idea, she is unelectable, and I told you why. Romney, unelectable because of Romney care and other reasons, too liberal. Shall I name a few others? Huckabee, say guitar player. There are no candidates that I can see who can beat the Democrats. There's only one who I think has a chance to beat the Democrats, and a good one at that. He is a tough, hard businessman, Donald Trump. He'll be with us at 634 East Coast, uh, 334 on the West Coast, and everywhere else in between. Question for the audience of the savage nation that in fact controls the independent vote in the United States of America. That's right. You heard me right. The savage nation probably has more influence over the independent vote in this country than any other single radio or television show. Why do I say it? Well, you can figure it out for yourself. What would you ask Donald Trump if you had a chance? He's going to be on the show. You won't get a chance because we're going to be flooded. What should I ask him? 1-800-449-8255-michaelsavage.com. Let's go to the callers quickly. Anthony in Chicago, go ahead. You're up on the Savage Nation. Yeah, I don't want to uh, take away from the tragedy that occurred but all weekend long, if you could take snippets from the media, it was white supremacist, Tea Party, Republican, talk radio, Republican, talk radio, white supremacist, over and over Now, again. let's compare that to when the Fort Hood massacre occurred, when the Muslim major Hassan went on a rampage, killing 11 or 12 and wounding 30. Do you remember what the liberal media said? They said, hush, hush, my darling, don't rush to judgment. Hush, hush, my darling, don't mention his race or ident uh, ethnicity. Hush, hush, don't mention the fact that he was a Muslim. Hush, hush, let's not rush to judgment. Do you remember that one, Anthony? Yes, I do remember, and I remember it took eight hours into the day before they even admitted it that he was a Muslim. In fact, I think ah, now, why, would it, why do you think that would be, that the very same loudmouth loser leftists like the Time Magazine's Joe Klein or the others on a CNN such as Wolfie Blitzer Boy come out immediately blazing with both water guns, firing and squirting their water guns at the people who have basically put them out of business? While when Major Hassan went on a shooting spree, they told us to shut up Dummy up, shut your mouth, don't say Muslim, don't say Islam, don't rush to judgment. Well, I don't have to answer that question. It's because of the poison politics of the radical verminous left in this country. 1-800-449-8255, Georgia, New York City on WOR. Go ahead, you're on the Savage Nation. Mike, you hit the nail on the head. Uh, the Fort Hood thing also came to my mind as I was listening to that. And these people were in their glory uh, of having a weapon to go and, and make that. Was How many story. years have I told you if there's a um, murder or such committed by a white male, preferably with blonde hair and blue eyes, the vermin on the left immediately identify his name, race, and ethnicity? Immediately. While if there is a, uh, a let us say, murder, uh, some kind of horrendous occurrence such as this that is committed by someone other than a white male, rarely, if ever, do we get even a hint or a peek at the uh, individual responsible for it. And that is because of the poison politics of the vermin on the left. You know that, and I know that. Absolutely. Thank you for the call. Let's go to the next caller. Adam in Pittsburgh, go ahead. Fire away. You're on the Savage Nation. 